But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Amen. And I just wanted to lay that little foundational. You need to know him in the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his suffering. See, he suffered so that when we go through hell here on earth, he's our buffer. He's the barrier between the pain and us. So yes, we'll feel a pinch, but we won't feel the whole, uh, the whole sting that goes with this world. There is so much more to following Christ than, than getting out of hell. So much more. But you have to pursue him to get to know him, to get to know at least half of all that's in there for us. Do you realize that being that wrapping yourself up in the Lord Jesus Christ, there is divine protection. There is forgiveness. There is deliverance from all that's all the can't help it and all the stuff that you can't shake loose. Divine freedom, divine inner healing. There is so much in Jesus Christ. If you would just give him a chance. And some of us have to continue to remind ourselves, no matter what problem we face in life, no matter what obstacle, no matter what challenge, no matter what comes against us, we have a Savior. He's in the world today. Not yesterday, today. He's in our lives. He's involved. In every detail, the more we try to live for him, and that's why I tell everybody who walks with the Lord, raise the bar as high as you can. Don't settle where you are. Don't say, well, God understands my heart. No, that's a flimsy excuse. Give God from every second of every minute, every minute of every day, every day of every week and so on try your best we're all we're all going to miss the mark but try your best to aim as high as you can in every moment with every emotion with every thought with every attitude with every word whether you're seen by others or whether you're all by yourself. Keep your bar raised high. Keep your aim for holiness raised high. Because God rewards those who try harder. The more we put him first, the more favor we get from him. He's like a parent dealing with either a, an obedient child or an obstinate child. Which one do you want to be? So when Jesus died on the cross, he nailed everything to the cross. He nailed our sins, our flesh, our propensities, our weaknesses, our emotional scars, that's what he wears on his back. By his stripes, we are healed. Our physical ailments, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. There's so much more to that. But right now, I just wanted to cover those, those key points. That's what we're celebrating this weekend. 
We're celebrating our resurrected Savior. Because with his resurrection, he pulls us up with him. Genesis chapter 7, starting at verse 1, we're telling the story of Noah. And there's a reason I'm doing this. And the Lord said unto Noah, what will the Lord say unto you? That's my question to you before I go, go on reading. What will the Lord say to you in this day and age? How many of us will God speak to? How many of us will God call when he's ready to, to snatch us up and get us up out of here? How many of us will hear his voice? And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house on into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. See, for those of you who think you can live a life of sin and still get into heaven, no, no. You have to receive the gift Jesus gave, not just believe it. If I, I got to stop here real quick. If, if Jeanette tells me my gift is at Lynn's house, and I say, okay, thank you very much, but I never go to Lynn's house to get the gift, then I still missed out on whatever that gift could benefit me with because I never went to get it. She gave it. She placed it in a particular location. And all I had to do is go and receive it. But I never go. Many of you believe. The devils believe and tremble. Hmm. All right. Listen. Belief is not the only thing, y'all. That's what I'm trying to say. So I'm going to read that sentence again. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. We can live under the ark of safety, y'all. So my question to you is when Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. Are you his sheep? You got to be plugged in in order to get the signal. You can watch somebody sing on the computer all day long. But if your speakers are out, and you got a set of, of headphones and you never plug the headphones in. You will never hear what's going on. Unless the headphones are plugged in and the ear, the phones are on your ears. We have to get plugged in to Jesus Christ to see all that he has for us in this life. He said, I have given you life and that more abundantly and for those of you who are in Christ Jesus you have his protection you have his favor you have his smile on your life you are too blessed to be stressed because you have the covering he's working on your behalf he is on your side he is answering your prayers. He's hearing your prayers. He's not turning a deaf ear to you. No matter what you're going through, God is for you and he's working for you. He's working things out for you. Don't give up. Don't turn to the beggarly elements of your old life. God is working for you. He said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Let not your heart be troubled, y'all. Oh, all right. Let me go on. <clears throat> Verse four, for yet seven days and I will cause it to rain upon the earth. Forty days and forty nights and every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. And Noah did according unto all that the Lord commanded him. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of the waters were upon the earth. Mm, mm, mm. Do you realize 
that anybody in around him, if they had believed what he said, they could have gone on the ark too. But they all missed out because, number one, they didn't believe it. He had been singing that same old song for almost 100 years. Building that arm. And people looking at him like he is cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. And some of y'all look at your Christian family friends, your family and friends, as if they're cuckoo too. Some of y'all laughing at them. You look at them sideways. You see them coming and you dash out the side door because you don't want to hear it. You don't want to hear what Lynn has to say when she's trying to plead with you for your soul. You don't want to hear what Peter has to say when he's praying for you. You don't want to hear what Rashad has to say when he's witnessing to you about the Lord. You don't want to hear what Jeanette has to say when she's giving God all the glory and letting you know why you need to know him. You don't want to hear what they got to say. You don't want to hear what my cousin Vivi has to say when she's trying to explain her experiences and close encounters with God and how real he is. You don't want to hear what they have to say. You know how sad, how sad that is? Hmm? When Key and her son witness for the Lord. So you don't want to hear that. So my question is, what are you going to do? See, something's coming down the pike in these last days. There's going to be a lot of surprises. And there are two things that are going to be going on at the same time, simultaneously. And God is going to make a distinction between who are really his, even those who are about to be his, and those who are not. There's going to be a clean cut. And those who are not, even those who think they are but are not, are going to be moved aside so they can watch the blessings of God on God's people. And the blessings of God on God's people are going to be phenomenal. Blessings are going to fall out. From, it's going to be like, Giant raindrops from the sky, a, a torrential rain, a, tor a torrent of blessings. Going to be coming all over the place. Miraculous blessings, uh, inheritances coming from folks you don't even know. All kind of crazy things, the government even doing stuff that they never would have done before. All kind of blessings coming from all crazy areas, unexpected blessings. People that don't have children leaving you the inheritance. And you're like, I didn't know them that well. But you don't know what a blessing you were in their life. And then those of you who refuse to walk with the Lord, you're going to be subject to every foul and ugly thing that happens on this planet. God is going to make a marked difference between his people and those of you who don't want to hear it, those of you who think it's weak to believe in God, let me tell you, baby, I was weak all my life when I was in sin. But in Christ, I am strong. Why? Because he is strong and his strength is made perfect in my weakness. That's the difference. I don't have to depend on my bow, my arrow, my gun, my mouth, my fist. I don't have to depend on my schemes and my know-how. No, I don't know how. God, show me how. Bam, there it is. You have no idea how much easier life is with Christ in your life. You have no idea how much it is, how, how much easier it is to deal with yourself and everybody else. Because of God's love on you. You have no idea the peace that passes all understanding. When you would be normally pulling out your hair and, and cutting yourself and scratching and going through all kind of mess. You're at peace. Why? 
because you have the risen Savior living in here through the power of his Holy Ghost. You can't make it without him. That's why his resurrection is so important. Without his resurrection, there is no Holy Ghost to abide in us. You know how miraculous that is to know that God is in each and every one of us? Guiding us, warning us. Let me share this quick story. Many times, you know, we go through life and there are dangers seen and dangers unseen. Here's the difference in following Christ. I'm walking down the street, totally ignorant to what's in front of me. It's nine o'clock at night, just got off the bus. I'm on the north side of the street, on the south side of the street. There are four guys I never saw before, not even in the neighborhood. And the light is bright there so I can see their faces, but I don't know them. They're working on a car. Now, in my mind, they're either working on a car or working on ripping it off. I didn't know. And I didn't know if they were good guys or bad guys because I did not know them. So out of wisdom, I walk on the north side of the street, give myself a wide berth from the unknown. But God, in all his love, tells me, firmly cross over to the other side. And I'm, I'm not excited about the fact that I heard God's voice like a dodo. I'm, I'm giving him a debate. I'm reasoning with him. Well, Lord, there's guys over there and I don't, he cut me off. Cross over to the other side. Okay, but Lord, cross over to the other side now. Okay, I'm going, I'm going. And I went. And those guys were minding their business, taking care of the car. It was safe over there. It was not where I was headed. You see, okay, I'll tell you what I was avoiding. When I looked to the left, there was a big, burly dog glaring at me. Big, hairy, looked like a bear. He was glaring at me all the way down the street. And under my breath, I'm, I'm whispering, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I bind you in the name of Jesus. And I made it home unscathed. Dog stayed on his turf. You know how dogs are territorial like some of you men are. Some of you women too. But anyway, we'll move on. What the Lord was showing me is when there is a need for supernatural intervention, divine protection, I got, I mean, I'm in the ark of safety, y'all. I'm already in the ark. Why? Because I'm protected from the elements of this world. When I was unsaved, I was attacked three times in my life by packs of dogs during mating season. Very bad scene. Scratching, biting, they're all over. Thank God for a big pocketbook, but that's all I had for defense. Listen, the fourth time I was attacked, I wasn't touched. Why was I not touched? I was not bitten. Why was I not bitten? I was not scratched. Why was I not scratched? Because of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the power that's in his name because of his resurrection power. <laughs> Listen, when those dogs started charging me from all, it was a 360 degree charge. They were coming from all sides and there was no defense in my hand. But out of my mouth, I instinctively hollered, I bind you in the name of Jesus. And as soon as I did that, it was as if a veil went over their eyes 
and something knocked their, the memory out of their brains and they totally forgot what they were doing. They stopped seeing me and noticing that I was even there. And they were like, oh, wow, I was charging, but where was I going? Well, I guess I'll go back where I came from. And they all just meandered back away, back to where they were. They had started from in the first place. The name of Jesus has power. A woman was driving down the freeway and it was a multi-car accident and cars were flipping and flying and banging and crashing. And all she kept saying, and there were people in the car with her, so they were eyewitnesses to this. All she kept saying was, Jesus, 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 protect Jesus, Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And it was like the parting of the waters, supernaturally. She's going, and as soon as it looks like she's getting ready to hit something, something hits that and knocks it out of her way. The whole way she's going, something spins out of her direction just in time for her to squeeze through and not touch anything and nothing touch her. And she went on down the road, called 911 to help the people that were all in the accident, but she was safe. Why? Jesus! I was in my house dreaming and I dreamt that I went to the restroom and saw my husband in the tub, nose and mouth under the water. He had fallen asleep and died in his sleep, drowned in his sleep. And it woke me up and I jumped out of the bed and I go to the restroom the door is closed, the light's out because he's blind, make no difference to him. And I turn the light on and there he is in the tub, dozing off, getting ready to slump down too low. And I hollered, sit up! And I told him the dream and how God protected him by the dream I had. The Lord told me to go home one day. I'm running these down like a gaggling gun, because you have to see the difference God makes in our lives. I'm heading home, but I want to make three stops, three different stores. I'm going to be gone about two or three hours. So as I'm as uh, I'm getting ready to head home, I decide, well, let me go on to the store. And as I get ready to turn, I feel this unction in my spirit. Go home. Your husband needs you now. I'm thinking, okay, something's wrong with him. I go home. Thank God I obey. I go home. Milton's in the recliner relaxing. I'm asking him, is, any, is anything wrong? He said, no, baby, I'm fine. How you doing? How was your day? And I'm thinking, well, why would I get that feeling? So then, as I was telling him I was going to go to the stores, so I'll just head on back out, then I start smelling burning. Something's burning in the air. So I said, Lord, do we have another brush fire in those mountains? So I go outside, and I look to see where the fire is. The fire is not in the mountains. The fire is not in the hills. The fire is coming from the back of my house. So I run up the driveway and lo and behold, my whole electrical box is on. It's not on fire. Smoke is coming up from the wall that holds the electrical box, the fuse box. I get in the house, call 911 while I'm dressing my husband and call the fire department. They come, we go. I would have been a widow that day, and my husband would have died an awful death if God had not told me, go home, your husband needs you. He never smelt the smoke. I did. He wouldn't have seen how to get out of there because he was blind. We don't understand all that's involved with walking with Christ. Supernatural divine protection 
things we don't even know. I go to church one night when I'm taking care of my father. Now I had already led him to the Lord. But now I'm going to night service and he's sitting in the bedroom watching TV. He's fine. And we get ready to go out when we head towards the church. And I get this sickening feeling. And I, as soon as we got to church, I put in, a, in an urgent prayer request. Please pray for my father that if he falls, he doesn't get hurt. I feel like he's going to fall. Please pray for his protection. Please, we pray. I got home. He was on the floor. And I asked him because I know how nervous he could get. I'm scared. I'm like, Pop, did you hurt yourself? No, I'm fine. I said, were you scared? No, I knew you were coming home in a minute. I just laid here and relaxed. No harm, no foul, no fear, no nothing. We get him back in the chair and he's fine. No bruises, no scratches, nothing. Nothing. God will quicken you. He will warn you. He will admonish you. But you got to have your earphones on your ears and the thing plugged in in order to hear his voice. His sheep know his voice. And the only reason we can hear his voice now is because of the power of his resurrection. But then there's the fellowship of his suffering. Check this out, y'all. I'm at the hair salon. And I get my feelings hurt. I can't tell you how many times. And what happens? I head straight to the restroom, lock the door, run the water so I can cry and pray, cry out to God. Help me, Lord. Take the hurt out. You said that, that if we come to you, if we're lay tired and heavy laden, you would give us rest. I need that rest right now. I need that peace. Because that hurts. That hurts what they did. That hurts what they said. Please, Lord, take the hurt out. Heal my heart. Help me forgive. By the time I come out that bathroom and I'm working on my customer's hair, problem solved, hurts gone, irritations gone, anger's gone, forgiveness, bam, right there. He deals with every aspect of our lives. And yes, if you want to say he's a crutch, he's the best crutch I ever had because he doesn't fold under my load. And he won't fold under yours. But he will gird you up to withstand whatever life throws at you. That's the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Thank you, Lord, for what you did on the cross. And thank you for raising your son from the dead. Don't you want to know a savior like that? Don't you want to get close to him? Don't you want to know that kind of love? The love that removes your insecurities. The love that removes your fears. The love that removes your suspicions. The love that removes, the love that removes your rage. Your bitterness. Oh! The God that tells you you must forgive and then gives you the supernatural ability to do so. Don't you want to serve someone like that? He'll give you the ability you don't have. Mm. That's why the Bible says his strength is made perfect in my weakness. That's why it's worth knowing the Lord. And I ask you to pray with me to receive Jesus into your heart right now. Father, I may not know you. I may not understand what all this is about, but I need help. And I ask you to forgive me. 
I received the Lord Jesus Christ in my heart as my Lord and Savior. And I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit, deliver and heal me from all my mess. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, a lot of you say, well, you got to be convinced that he raised from that. Let me tell you this, y'all. When I gave my heart to the Lord, I told the Lord straight out, I'm not convinced Jesus was raised from the dead, that he did all that. I'm not convinced that you're even real. But that little mustard seed faith that God received from me, just by taking the chance and saying that, that prayer for forgiveness, God accepted me, even with all my doubts, y'all. See, you don't have to be totally convinced. You just have to be willing, willing to approach him, willing to come to the throne of grace to find help in time of need. You got to be willing, that's all. You don't have to understand it all. You don't have to believe it all. I didn't even believe in heaven or hell. I'm telling you, I had a warped sense of reality. But I came to God with my brokenness and my warpedness. And God accepted me. And remember what he says in his word. He that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. God bless you. Come to him, y'all. And let me know in the comments section if you gave your heart to the Lord. That'll encourage me. God bless you. Amen.